Thank you for being a friend. Travel down the road and back again. <laughs> Y'all, Zane has officially left the building. Yo, listen, was it just me? Or did this little interaction between Zane and Laura freak you out? It freaked me out. Like, Laura is in the women's trailer, right? Seeing psychedelic colors, watching turtles jump across the bed. <laughs> Wait, do turtles even jump? I don't know, but she's been tripping, right? Off the food that Elder Mother shoved down her throat to the point that she doesn't even see what we see. She doesn't see that Zane has fallen off the rails. She doesn't see that Zane has lost the little mind that she had left. If someone has just told you that she lost her two best friends who used to sleep in the very bed that you're about to crawl into. She shared with Laura that Paula and Lacey have gone on to the Raku and Laura didn't even catch on at first. So she's so high, like. <laughs> If someone would have told you that, what would you do? Lord have mercy, poor Zane. She's so desperate for a friend that she had to practically beg Laura to be in this friendship with her. And Ruth needs to come and get her protege before Laura puts two and two together. And something's telling me that she's gonna be the next sacrifice, like either her or her husband. But speaking of Ruth, lately Ruth has been in a situation where she's having to explain herself, whether it be with Daikon, elder mother and now she's gotten into a situation where she's gonna have to explain herself to the highest why she's hemmed up in the trailer with daikon with the door closed are they gonna make it down the aisle i don't know the highest may just change his mind about all of this he may just rethink this whole highest wife-to-be mumbo jumbo that everyone is so freely spewing from their lips whenever the occasion calls for it now this is my review commentary breakdown of Tyler Perry's Ruthless season four episode number three and it's titled Behind Closed Doors and yeah it's a lot of things going on behind closed doors on the compound we got Ruth and Daikon with their I love you today hate you tomorrow antics and he forced her to watch him break off this random jump off <laughs> that just happened to be passing by his trailer at the time. Then we have River, who overdosed their fearless leader behind closed doors. We got Elder Mother hiding what's supposed to be Lacey's dead body behind closed doors, but we now know that she's alive. And we have two FBI agents being tortured behind closed doors. So we can definitely say that this episode was appropriately titled. The episode opened with Ruth explaining to Daikon why she was standing there and the middle of the woods in the dark with Manny with his draws down <laughs> and guys this is what I meant right by the buildup of the character's growth and the transformation from one direction to the other like that flip mode persona that we see in Joan do you guys see the difference how the change is building up in Ruth we can actually see her taking control we see the series of events that's leading up to her what's becoming a more brand and bolder character but Joan and even Zane's character on the other hand were like a light switch on and off like you see the difference but she explained to Daikon that she was helping to relieve his pain because he's one of the strongest and the finest soldiers on the compound well she didn't say the finest but that's what she wanted to say right <laughs> she said that Manny was the strongest and the most loyal soldier that they had and she felt compelled to help him to relieve his pain and that El the mother was the one responsible for Manny being in the condition that he was in. Daikon dismissed Manny and told him that he could leave and then Ruth slapped him and warned him to never undermine her again in front of company. <laughs> and that sorry was the only thing that she wanted to hear. And since Daikon just got chumped off by a woman, I guess he went to go and try to flex his muscle with River to find out why he gave the highest so much of the magic more than usual. Now, River said that he gave the highest what he normally gives him, but the highest wanted more. River wanted Daikon to agree that the highest has been asking for more of the magic more and more and more than usual. And he explained to Daikon that he mixed it all up up and just threw the rest of it away. 
Well, I guess Daikon's going to let him live for now, but, you know, until he finds out otherwise. Now, Elder Mother's prime goal in life, we all know this, is to be sure that she cooks for all compound visitors and drug them out of their minds. And as this is the only way that they can get normal sane people to stick around till in the morning. Mission accomplished. Now, after Elder Mother got escorted to her trailer to turn in for the night, Ruth stopped by the gazebo to give Joan an update on River and the Highest. She let Joan know that the Highest is awake and that River is still alive. River has suddenly become a comedian, making off-color jokes about Aaron, about taking Laura to be killed, and for some reason, this may not be too far from the truth. I don't know. It's something about this Lucy and Ricky duo that is coming to a screeching halt, right? And Aaron threw up. He threw up the entire dinner plate right there on the grass. And I'm so glad that this happened. This means that the drugs that Elder Mother put in their food never digested into his bloodstream. And he immediately rejected it. So now the grass is going to be high and not Aaron. <laughs> now, before they get to the man's trailer, he mentioned to River that he heard kids behind one of the trailers. And River said that they were playing hide and seek. And of course, Aaron thought that this was strange to have kids playing in the middle of the night in the dark. Now, is it just me? But for some, I don't know, for someone who wants to escape the compound, no one ever gives compound visitors the truth about what's going on. Not River, not Joan, not Ruth. The only ones who's like giving people the real tea are the ones who are being tortured and held captive but nobody believes them <laughs> that's that's all they talk about escaping the compound and stealing all of the highest money but when real normal people come around they flip mode just like out of the blue it's like they all robotically turn into loyal followers of the raccoon now when they got to the men's trailer everybody's in their sleep and naked now this is why i said in my other video that this episode was a complete sausage fest <laughs> If you missed that video, make sure that you check it out if you haven't already done so. Like, if the scene calls for nudity, then okay, cool, let's see it. But the scene doesn't call for everyone to be naked. Like with Andrew being in the punishment trailer with his balls glistening and dangling. <laughs> The scene was borderline, like some people appreciated the true-to-life cult life depiction and others felt like it was completely unnecessary. So here in the men's sleeping quarters, why do we need to see these men naked while they're sleeping? I mean, the focus completely was taken away from the meat and potatoes of the scene with River talking to Aaron about how things were on the compound and him holding on to that duffel bag for dear life. River told him that they sleep naked because it's hot. They got stinky feet and some of them don't like to take showers. <laughs> what? Oh, okay, I'm, I'm done. And River is constantly trying to sleep with this man. He's very flirty with Aaron, you know, throwing hints left and right. Like, this man is married, River. Respect that and move on. Like, stop trying to force him into conversion, right? Let it breathe for a minute. And Aaron was more concerned about why the door is kept locked from the outside. And he actually had the same concerns that Lacey and Paula had back in season two, remember? Like, what if there's a fire? And I'm wondering if one of these trailers will catch fire at some point because this is actually the second mention of a fire breaking out and the doors being locked. Now, when they got up the next morning, Aaron woke up and found River twirling his hair between his fingers. Lord have mercy, look, I'm gonna need somebody to give River some kind of attention. He told Aaron that it was time to go to the yard to eat. And Aaron is still, you know, trying to take that duffel bag, but River talked him out of it and told him that the bag looked very suspicious and that the highs wouldn't like it. Aaron did manage to trail behind behind River though and grab his phone and then he hid it inside of his pocket. In our next scene, I kind of covered this in the beginning of the video, but I did want to point out the fact that they're not allowed to go to the outhouse at night. Like they have to go in the pot that sits right outside the trailer and it's emptied in the morning. And this is by far the grossest thing I've ever heard in my life. Like, who decides on who's going to empty said pot, right? <laughs> like, do they take turns? Is there a schedule of some sort? It's just disgusting. But I wonder how long those psychedelics are going to remain active in Laura's system. How much longer is she going to see the compound as this beautiful place that she loves so much? And as Manny and his friend were leaving to go to breakfast, he noticed that Manny was moving around a little bit better. And their friendship kind of reminds me 
of the friendship that Oliver and Clark used to have. Like they had each other's backs, right? Until they didn't, right? So I wonder if he's going to betray him like Clark did Oliver. Manny shared with him the story of Daikon catching Ruth, giving him the tetanus shot and how Ruth lied to Daikon saying the elder mother was the one who was responsible. They both agreed that if they were to ever get questioned about it, that he'd have Manny's back. And in our next scene here, we see all of the women serving the men food and elder mother can't let those pans get emptied without her sprinkling a little bit of powdered shrooms across the top. And they're still trying to figure out what's in the food. And I don't know how they're able to go about in their daily lives without the food affecting them because everybody on the compound is sharing the same diet plan, right? Like they're all eating the same thing, but yet they seem to be able to turn the raku way on and off like it's nothing. Elder Mother told them that she had a patient in the infirmary and Ruth shared with Joan that it was actually Lacey who was Elder Mother's patient. Now, when Elder Mother got there, she told Lacey that she took all of the bullets out. And at first, I didn't think that Lacey had been shot because we didn't see any blood and she was covered with pots and pans. But I don't know. Did y'all see any blood when the soldiers first laid her on the table? But it looks like Lacey has given up, y'all. Like, she's tired of fighting and she's giving in to whatever Elder Mother wants her to do. Elder Mother shared a childhood story with her, right, about this mule named Sadie and the proud moment that her father had, like, <laughs> breaking the mule. And she said that she's going to do the same thing to Lacey. So Lacey just said, you know what, F it. I, <laughs> I've been stabbed, shot, tortured, manipulated, scared, raped, used, and abused. So I give up. She said that she has learned her lesson and that she cannot fight against the Raku. So now her fate lies in the hands of the highest if she's going to live or if she's going to die. And in our final scene, ladies and gents, I've covered this in a separate video um, that I posted like a couple of days ago. And it's already gotten over like 3,000 views. So thank you so much, guys. Like, I really appreciate each and every one of you. So to add to this scene, before Ruth left that trailer, she had Daikon right where she wanted him. We saw her grab him by the balls, those same balls that were just knocking up against the cheeks of some random jump off. And she told him not to ever disrespect her in front of those low-class gutter ass women there on the compound. She told him that she will turn her back and let him do whatever he needed to do with the highest so that, you know, he'll be pleased. But he's not to lay down with any other woman on that compound. She kissed him and then she told him to come and grab a plate. <laughs> Ruth is a trip, right? But anyway, she opened the door and there stood Tyrone with that hot robe on. Don't he look hot, y'all? Does it look hot to y'all? Tell me what you think. <laughs> Tell me what you guys think about this episode down in the comments below. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. You know I'd appreciate it. And if you're a fan of Tyler Perry's Ruthless, go ahead and sub to the channel for more videos just like this one. Thank you so much for joining me on today's episode of Ruthless TV, you guys. And I'm going to see you on the next one.